Hi, and welcome to Coping During the COVID Crisis. I'm Janet Gross. We're getting around more and more. We're seeing and we'll see more doors opening for us. Still, there are some whose lives have been forever changed, and even those these new phases will be stressful for some people. Keeping it together, keeping your loved ones together, that can be a challenge even without a pandemic. Good news, it can be done, and uh, there is help. Dr. Roy Salgado, professor of counseling at the University of Holy Cross, is here to talk about that. And it is, you know, an ongoing thing that, you know, we're going to be at home more than we might normally have been, say, last summer. <laughs> right. You know, and while everything is evolving, you know, from week to week to month to month during the COVID crisis, the, the one thing that has really been a, 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 a very fixed structure is our families, being in right. our homes with our family members. And so here we are, all of these months later, with the same handful of people under with under whom we share the same roof. Mm -hmm. And you know, people can be frayed in their, their emotions and they can they can start to irritate one another, you know, and, and we have addressed this before in a previous episode. But it's important enough to readdress it because this Absolutely. is something that we consistently have to contend with is managing the relationships in our lives, the most important ones, our spouses, our children, our, our parents. And so it's important to be able to to really think about how to best interact with the people that we share most of our space and time with now. And as you said, things evolve. Well, that evolves too. Your relationship right. in, um, not so much isolation anymore, but being together more, it does change. Right. And things start to grate on you that might not have you know, been a thing even two months ago. You know, two or three months ago, a 24 hour day consisted of eight hours of sleep, eight hours of going out into the world, going to work, children going to school, and then coming back home at the end of the evening. So you really only spent a certain amount of hours right. during waking hours with the people in your life, the, the, your family members, the people in your household. Mm -hmm. And then you went and did things and you would come back. All of these months later, we're together. Hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month. Well, and you really get to know people. You really do get to know people. And it can be overwhelming. And then yeah. um, those, those things that, that can be irritating are not only irritating for a couple of hours, but irritating for days on end. And so being able to navigate that and uh, work that out and being there for one another so that uh, you can create this as an opportunity to really enjoy being with your loved ones as opposed to uh, being irritated by them or resenting them. Right. And you do want to come out of this with a positive memory you right. know once it's all over you can look back and say yeah you know we did this and we did these things and not man they got on my nerves so much you know? right i was sharing with you prior to the show that you know my, my wife is predominantly a stay-at-home um, mom she's also a professional counselor but while our son he's three years old so for the past three years she's been at home with him now i'm at home as well and i've had the opportunity to be able to enjoy that moment mm -hmm. uh, of this one time in his development. And to she be has there. two, let me just say that. And she has two, absolutely, <laughs> because we get to share in the responsibility right. in a new way. Right. And so just reframing that and, and being that for, you know, for your partner, for your spouse, for your parents, for your children in new ways um, that perhaps otherwise um, we weren't able to be because we were out in the world uh, doing other things. You know, you focus on the opportunity more than the problem. Absolutely. Or the, you know, problem. And you know what? I've learned a lot about myself too, and I guess a lot of people do when you're stuck at how you react all the time and you know, right. oh, I, I bet that's getting on their nerves or whatever. Right, and being mindful of that too, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, there are things that we do right? that are irritating to others. How is that possible, <laughs> but I guess. <laughs> Moi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we yeah. irritate others, and so, you know, yeah. being on top of that, and, and it's, a, it's an opportunity to gain self-awareness because you're around the same handful of people all day long as opposed to being in different situations with different people throughout the course of the day. If you're eight hours with one group of people and then eight hours with a different group of people, then you're only with them in a limited amount of time. And so maybe something is not warranted um, to be mentioned if you're doing something that's grating right. or irritating. But if it's for 24 hours, weeks on end, months on end at this point, then things are probably being addressed worldwide, but to learn how to address them accordingly. So you really have to um, maintain uh or give your family some grace. Right. A little bit of leeway. Absolutely. 
It's and important. hope they give it to you too. <laughs> right. It's important. You have to show grace to your family members. You know, they love you and you love them and no one is perfect. And you certainly get some insight into those imperfections when you're cloistered together. Um, but uh, showing grace to that individual or to those individuals is going to be important to be able to see this through. Because we're going to be living this way for many more months. Right. And we need to practice the skills of showing grace to one another so that we can get through it. Otherwise, uh, the, the mental health um, consequences can be overwhelming and burdensome. Mm -hmm. And pra by practicing, I think that it does help you. You know, it doesn't right. just help the relationship or it doesn't help the other person, you know, be able to look at you anymore, right. but, but it helps you. Right, right. You know, if you're working on it. Yeah, you know, and we're always wanting to be heard by the other person. This is an opportunity to learn how to listen to someone else and really uh, understand why it is that people do what they do, why, what it is that they're thinking and, and their process for engaging whatever uh, activity may be that might be irritating you. Just listening to understand what the other person's perspective might be. Right. And I guess that's part of what the University of Holy Cross is doing with the, the service of the free counseling. They're giving people an ear to right. maybe talk it through and, and get the other side without going to the other side, get the other right. side. Right, exactly. You know, one of our tracks is the marriage and family and couples counseling track. And that particular track teaches our counselors in training how to navigate systems, family systems. And they have the skill sets to be able to offer that to the client that comes in. They come in with their side of the story, but then the counselor can perhaps offer them um, a different perspective. Have you thought about this and how this perhaps impacts fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And so our counselors uh, certainly have the training and the skill sets to be able to offer that to a person who's navigating uh, interpersonal dynamics um, within their home. Right. And, you know, while we're talking about that, if you want um, to be a part of that, oh, I know I have the number here. Wait, okay, I got it. 504-398-2168. Um, and that is, you can call them and arrange to have a counseling session. Um, Telemedical telemedical or even on telephone right, uh, right. Through zoom or something yes through the telemental health counseling uh, platforms that we have in place you can reach out call uh, the counseling and training center and the administrative assistant would take that call triage it to the director and then the director would assign you to a counselor that can help you with your presenting problem and if that includes um, trying to navigate interpersonal dynamics within your home while uh, dealing with the COVID crisis, then that's something that our counselors are trained to do. Okay, and that's free, so it's free not like charge. you're, you know, going to go into debt over this because that's a worry for a lot of people. Yes. Not just now, but in many yes. other times. Yes, because uh, counseling services in the marketplace can be quite yes. um, expensive. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that's free of charge to the community, anyone in the state of Louisiana, and uh, we're here to offer that service. And that's, normally there's a nominal charge, but yes. once this hit, you guys changed like that. Right, we saw that there was a need and we, as part of the missions of the Maronites of Holy Cross, realized that we need to get in front of this and provide this service to the community because if this was gonna go for the long haul as it is, yeah. we realized that uh, tempers would be frayed, um, people's emotional well-being would be impacted, and so this is a service to the community um, that keeps in line with the mission of the university and the Maronite Nuns of Holy Cross. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the need for space, not necessarily social distancing space. Stay with us. Why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. And welcome back. We're doing a lot of practicing these days, practicing social distancing, practicing patience and kindness. Dr. Michaela Hartline, uh, an assistant professor of counseling at the University of Holy Cross is joining us now to talk about all that practicing and will we ever get it right? I know the answer, no. No. <laughs> but you have to keep practicing, that's what we it is. We have to, it's that's all, right. in all of our best interest to do so. That's right. Dr. Hartline, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Okay, so we, um, uh, we have been talking about maintaining 
our relationships and really valuing them and putting emphasis on them during this time, even as we have more freedoms and as we um, go further into the summer, it's, it's important that we keep those we loved in a loving relationship. And I guess that, that can, you know, people can grate on your nerves as in many situations, but when you're together so much, it becomes a bigger issue. Absolutely. Um, you know, individuals don't have that, that time for themselves when you're in a house with your children or with your spouses and with your family. So it's important to, to try and find time for yourself during this. You know, we're taking care of our children, we're taking care of our parents, we're taking care of our spouses, but when do you allow time to take care of yourself? It's important that during this time that we don't forget that. And we do things for ourselves, whether, you know, it's taking a bath, going outside for a walk, uh, whatever it is that you need um, to kind of help you during this time to, to help maintain those interpersonal relationships. Because before you can take care of others, um, you have to be able to take care of yourself as well. And everybody needs space, even when it's not COVID. Yeah, you know, that's a very important point that we all need that space. And pre-COVID, we may have sneaked in those opportunities sure. you know, th throughout the course of our day to have that alone time. It's more challenging right now to do so when you're in a confined space with a handful of people, however many people are in your home, whether it's one other person or several other people. And so to find that space is gonna be helpful to mitigate that as Dr. Hartline stated. Um, you need to be able to do that in order to can be better and refreshed and kind to others. Because if you don't ha offer that to yourself, then those around you are going to reap uh, the, the wrath of your uneasiness. It can almost be as refreshing as sleep, I think. I would say so, yes. Sleep and uh, self-care time, very important for mm -hmm. our own well-being as well as those around us. And, uh, Dr. Hartline, do you think it's that people um, maybe get too caught up in things and don't take that time? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's easy to worry about others, but when we have to worry about ourselves, it, it's difficult, you know. Often tell the students at the university, you can show that compassion and that care to your clients, but why can you not show it to yourself? Why can you not give yourself permission um, to feel and to have that time, whereas you would tell your clients to do the same? So, so yes, it's very hard. Um, and, and sometimes you have to plan for it. You have to, you know, if you're one of those people that have a schedule and things like that, maybe try planning for 30 minutes or an hour, whether that be in the beginning, the middle, or the end of the day, just for you. Um, like Dr. Salgado was saying, it's gonna help you, but it'll also help the individuals around you. And I'm sure that makes you a better counselor when you do that, when you take right. the time for yourself right. before you start telling other people or talking to other people about perspective and, and options. You know, and it's important to be able to do that each and every single day to find that space, you know, and the literature suggests that the best or most optimal time to do that is first thing in the morning. You know, if you wake up a few minutes in the morning before others do, to take that time to meditate, pray, exercise, just kind of regroup, it sets the tone for the day and then you can be your best self for those around you. And when they do things that grate your nerves or get irritating, then, then you're already charged. You're already good to go and you're able to accept mm -hmm. those things um, more uh, readily than when you haven't taken the time to do that. Right, there's a base that I get, and I'm sure a lot of people get, when you start your day like that, in, yes. in prayer, in you know, whatever it is that grounds me. Right. You know, and helps me. If I, if I miss that, it's not, it's not a good thing. It's important. Yeah, okay. Um, Dr. Hartline, um, I guess also, you do have to keep perspective in um, all that, in, in all of this that's going on and know that, okay, everybody's going through it and there's, there are different ways to look at things. Absolutely. Um, this is something, this pandemic is something that has affected everybody. Um, the working class, the, the retired individuals, as well as, you know, the children that are at home, um, their, their last, month of school, their last quarter of school was all done via Google Classroom or whatever platform they may have used. So so their sense of, of normalcy has also been disturbed. And, you know, I think it's, sometimes it's easy to for, forget about the way that the children are being affected because we as adults think, okay, we really know what's going on. We understand the seriousness of the situation. We have responsibilities as well as taking care of them, paying our bills, getting to work. But you know them as well. Uh, they they 
could no longer see their friends, you know, that that interaction, that safe space for them that was outside of the home was taken from them as well. So it's important to remember that this has affected everybody um, and, and just try and be mindful of that. Yeah, it's important to really take the time to listen to our children too, um, regardless of their developmental age, you know, whether they're three years old or 24 years old, you know, that, that we listen to them and, and realize that they have been impacted by this as well and that according to their developmental age, they're going through things. Their routines have been uprooted, right. their schedules are different. Uh, there's all sorts of emotions that go along with that. And with younger children, it may represent themselves or manifest themselves in behavioral changes. So they might be engaging in behaviors that are now irritating to you or grating on your nerves, but a response to the situation. And mm -hmm. to sit down and really investigate that and assess what might be going on is something that would be of benefit to your child as well as to yourself. Because sometimes it is hard to tell what's going on in your kid's head. Right. And so you really, because it may be, it may look like something totally different. Mm -hmm. Right. Than what you have is. to take the time to really observe and listen and ask. Do you help with that is uh, when people call, if somebody says, I don't get why my child is acting like this, or I, you know, things are so different in our house now. Oh, absolutely. It just adds to the stress, you know, of the, of the situation. Um, schooling was almost a time for parents to get done the things that they have to get done. And now that that's not an option, that those summer camps are no longer an option, how, how do you juggle being able to maintain those responsibilities that you had on top of not having some type of support um, that was present before this situation arose? So I guess... Uh, no, and to know that this is going to continue into the new school year, depending on right. the school system that your child is in, that, yeah. you know, some schools are going to go hybrid and some schools are going to go f stay fully online. So depending on what the circumstances are, you're going to have to navigate all of this and it's going to be very challenging. And so um, just knowing that that's part of uh, the new change mm -hmm. and um, you're going to find uh, tempers flared, people becoming irritated, people becoming overwhelmed with it all and figuring out ways to be able to most effectively handle it all and not um, take it out on your children or on your spouse or loved ones. The key I have to imagine is to listen. Dr. Absolutely. Um, you know, I often say when, when situations arise, whether it's with your child or with your spouse, um, it's important to listen to hear the other individual and instead of listening to respond, you know, normally when those situations arise and the arguments may occur, you're not really listening to try and hear what the other person is saying. You're listening so that way you can respond to them. So it's important to, to try and be mindful of the stressful situation and calm yourself down and go back and reevaluate and have the conversation and listen to actually hear what that other individual is trying to say. Boy, that's a good advice at any time. Yes. Because you can kind of tell when somebody's waiting to say what they want to say. <laughs> right, and so just being mindful of that and really listening, as Dr. Hartline said, and not be waiting to respond to whatever it is that may have been said. Okay. Dr. Hartline, thank you so much for joining us. It was, it was really interesting talking to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll be back in a moment with some tips on how to keep those loving relationships intact, even as so much around us changes. Welcome back. As we all know now, a lot of things can go wrong during a pandemic, but that doesn't have to include our relationships. And Dr. Roy Salgado is here to, you know, obviously to help us talk through this as you have been for the whole show. Um, and I guess as we go through these phases, whatever's an issue now, can it's going to be an issue later unless we take care of it. And we have to keep working at right. things with you know, purposefulness. And, and issues that may have been a factor in a family dynamic, whether it be between husband and wife or between parent and child, yeah. uh, is something that perhaps may have been there before the pandemic. And it just gets exacerbated because there's a focus on it. 
and it's day in and day out, day after day, week after week. And then tempers can be frayed, people can become irritated. And so just being mindful of that and uh, addressing it head on and moving forward. You don't want to have something linger on for an extended period of time and not address it. Um, mm -hmm. Then you start to build up resentment and, and anger and, and right. all sorts of things. So once you feel that, stop it. Right. right. Try, or try to stop it. And, and confront it and, and be honest about it. It's like, when you do this, I do not like that. This is how I feel when this happens. And just confront it. You know, it's not always easy. No. Um, it's not always easy to hear either if it's said to you. Right. What, right. What do you do? I mean, what are, I, I'm sure that as counselors, you give people tips on how to take it. Right. And, and be strong through right. it to, and, to improve. And that's what we as counselors refer to as uh, receiving corrective feedback. Oh. And so, you know, uh, the, the term that many people use is constructive criticism. You know, nobody likes to hear constructive nope. criticism um, because it's I like the criticism. constructive part. It's the criticism. It's the criticism mm -hmm. part that, that resonates, yeah. in, in it, that doesn't resonate. Um, but corrective feedback is offering someone the opportunity to do something different. You know, when you do this, this is how it impacts me. When you say this, this is how I feel. And so just being very mindful with how you express that and point things out to people. There are ways of saying things that are more readily received by someone than other ways. And so uh, you know, talking to your spouse, talking to your child, talking to your parent if they live with you and letting them know what it is that they're doing that you think um, they need to be aware of in case they weren't. Um, Perhaps some of the times they're not even aware. Right. People can be engaging in a behavior and not even be aware that they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yet, it uh, it impacts you in a negative or adverse way. And, and then it can spiral. Right. And, that's and then the it worst. turns into this bigger thing. Right. right. And then it doesn't become constructive criticism right. anymore. Right. <laughs> right. Fighting. Right. Okay, or you know whatever. I guess you know you, you talk a lot about mindfulness and purposefulness, and I guess you know as we um, go into these different phases, because we're going slowly through it, or hopefully we're going slowly through it, it gives us a chance to really kind of think things through before we make our decisions. Right. You know, and because we're in the same spot in the same home for an extended period of time, we're perhaps moving at a slower pace than we have before, and so it does offer that opportunity for us to be mindful of how to approach things. And being that we're going to be in our homes with our loved ones for months, extended even more months, um, that we address it now. And so, you know, when you do this, I don't like this. When you say this, this is how I feel. And to address it so you don't continue, because if you were to feel a certain way, if you were to feel anxious or stressed out or angry for months and months and months, eventually that valve is going to burst and it can the consequence could be something even greater so it's better to address it early on and be honest about it and and find a solution to whatever it is that it may be because it could be small now but six months down the road it could be a really big problem so it's important to address it early on and be truthful with what you're feeling and what you're thinking and how others are impacting you and i guess on the other side of that the things that are working great the things that yes. we want to hold on to because oh we made these changes and this kind of um, personal experience or this kind of reaction, that works for me or right. that works for us. You know, and not all things are negative. You know, nothing right. is black, nothing yeah. is white. There's a lot of gray in the middle. Um, and so while there may be instances where someone is irritated or annoyed with a family member, but there are many other instances where there are joyful things going on. And so to really um, invite that into your life and to focus on that and to redirect our attention to all the good things um, that present themselves during this time. This is an opportunity for families to, to eat meals together, to play together, to read and, and talk about what you have read or read books to little children. There's so many different things that uh, can be done during this time that can help mitigate the other things. You know, those families who, who eat meals together, who play together, who share um, experiences together, and parents who read to their children, when those children are read to, they acquire the, the, the skills, the language skills to be able to express themselves. And so when they're, they're able to verbalize what they're feeling and thinking, they're more likely to verbalize and express it that way as opposed to in a physical or behavioral way, as opposed to aggression or something of that nature. So being able to invest that time, energy, and effort right now in doing that to help mitigate some aggressive or, or, or violent way of responding in the future. And by violent, I don't necessarily mean a physical right. act, but perhaps, you know, 
words, mm -hmm. um, saying something that you would regret and uh, really can't take back. Mm -hmm. And those are great lessons to learn. Right. Even the lesson of listening. Yes, you yes. Know, for a, a child, because you want to, you know, kids, they want to say what they did on their day, but the lesson to learn what their sister did on that day or what you did on right. that, you know. Important good. skills, mm -hmm. you know, important skills to learn at home so that when you're interacting with people out in the world, whenever you're able to do that, sure. that you're able to bring that to the world and offer that to other people to listen to what it is that they're having to say. And although this has been around for a long time, it's just we just have, seem to have a little more time because we're all jammed in the same yeah. environment more and more. Yes. Well, you know, as we can get out, we can change that now, but um, it is important to uh, learn these lessons. And it is, you know, because while we still can get out and, and do more things, um, we have uh, fewer restrictions than we did, you know, a month ago right. or certainly three months yeah. ago. But with that, we're still encouraged to stay home. You know, it's actually better for everyone to be home more often than to be out and about mm -hmm. doing whatever it is that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Now we realize that we have essential things that we need to do in terms of work and buying groceries and going to the doctor and getting haircuts and things of that nature. But um, staying at home helps reduce the spread of the virus. And by doing that, by staying home, then these situations present themselves where you have personalities that are around each other a lot more often and tempers can flare. So to balance that out, spending time with one another in very intentional, purposeful ways where you're Right. Eating together, special playing times. together, special time. We have more of an opportunity to do that now than we ever have. Okay. Well, I know that you, as always, have some tips for us to uh, try and get us through this. Yes, yeah. and I think that it's important for us to know to enjoy our time at home. Um, we have all this extra time. It's important to enjoy it and to spend time with the family, to nurture our spiritual and personal growth while we're with our family. And you can share that too. And Those. we can share that absolutely it's with one another. It's not necessarily a private thing. That's a really Yes, thing. And it's something that I would encourage many people to do is to share that with others, mm -hmm. um, not only within their family, but um, outside of their home. To minimize stress, um, maintain personal hygiene. We need to not forget to continue to do that. Right, that, because it's pretty easy to become a slob. When, right. You know, over these months when we didn't have to get out. Yeah, when you think, okay, the three of us here or the four of us here, um, we're not, we don't have anything, so we don't have to spread anything to one another, but there's still other things out there. There's still germs, there's still <laughs> the flu, there's still all sorts of other viruses, but in the event that, that we get something, we don't want to uh, spread Right. It. Oh, I see. See, I was talking about what I was looking like. Yeah, oh, I when see, you were you're looking talking like health. <laughs> okay. Yes. And it's I'm important. I got the, you know, the, the exercise, <laughs> you know, things on. And, right, yeah. right. But... <laughs> but Perhaps from time to time we can uh, uh, dress it up a little bit. <laughs> and it's important to get adequate sleep and uh, drink water and eat well. Um, that those things are helpful in being able to stay on point, stay alert, and be mindful of what's going on around us so that we can interact with one another um, more effectively. When we do have to interact with our family at an extended period of time and there's something that's going on that's not quite working, it's important that we listen to learn what it is that they're expressing. That we take the moment and stop talking that we stop talking so that we can listen. I love that. that. We're, yeah, and it's important, mm -hmm. that's key. And that we're honest with one another, that we be honest with how we're feeling and how we're impacted by what someone else is doing. Um, that we repeat back what we've heard so that we can really convey that we've truly understood something. That we encourage the other individual with positive feedback, that not everyone is all good or all bad. That we encourage them and say, well, I don't like this behavior, but you I love. And pay attention to your responses that uh, mind your words because how you say something is going to be um, crucial as to how it's received by the other person and then the continued interactions with that family member with that loved one will be better um, in the long term if you do that right okay good advice in any time but especially now okay well dr sagata we thank you and your colleagues at the university of holy My cross pleasure. for joining us and talking through these issues and we thank you for watching as always and we want to help as we are all coping during the COVID crisis.